Now, financial modeling is a combination of three things, theory, mathematics, and Excel. So you need to know what it is you're trying to model. Uh, you then need to convert that into some, a numerical form. Um, and mathematics will help you abstract that model. And then Excel, when it came along um, and when people started using it in the real estate industry 20, 25, well, 25 years ago, just kind of started using it, uh, it became popular because it speeded up all of those those models. And a lot of these models have been around since the since the 50s and uh, the plenty of papers written about them, uh, etc. Uh, but it wasn't until we had uh, Excel that it became uh, the, you know, the, the speed and the calculation time put it within the reach of analysts who were looking at properties and, you know, at the front end, buying and selling and investing on behalf of, of funds and others. Um, and I've got a question here, actually. We've got a building on the left hand, just to get a, a clear uh, sort of understanding of where we're, where we're headed and what we're trying to do. I think we'll very kindly put a poll together and I'm gonna hit the launch polling button. And this property that you can see on the screen, perhaps uh, you could have a guess at how much you think that might be worth. So um, I'm not expecting, uh, right answers. I'm not going to tick or cross anything off. It's just to get a feel so that we can actually just start start thinking about how people every day in in real estate will walk past a building and they will have a look at that and and they'll they'll come to a view. They'll come to a decision. And if you're quite experienced, then you will be in the habit of looking at a building and being able to you know do the finger in the air and say you know I think it's I think it's worth about. Uh, worth about this much. When you're doing that, you're normally thinking about a value. You've got a few numbers to hand or a few variables to hand that you can play with. In your head, you'll be plugging numbers into those variables and coming up with, uh, coming up with an answer. Now, what you're doing there is making an assessment of the value of the building. Um, you may adjust that a little bit in your head uh, to come up with an idea of what you think worth is. And worth is how much you're willing uh, to pay for it. So you might be looking at the building and saying, uh, you know, I, I reckon someone's going to ask this much for it. The value is going to put a certain amount, a certain price on it. Um, but uh, I've got my own view as to what risk and opportunities there are in investing in that building. So I can afford to pay a little bit more or I won't be in the running at the, the valuation there. I know there are other people that want to buy that for X, Y, Z reason, um, but it's, it's not for me. It's not my risk appetite. It uh, doesn't suit my investment profile. So I so it won't be worth that won't be worth that to me. Now, I see that we have got, if I click on end polling, I think you'll all be able to see it. So I think we've got like a strong, a, a strong opinion of 30 million. Now, I don't mind whether you put 28 million, 30 million or 32 million. The important thing is to get a, a feel for the scale and the size of the numbers that you're looking at. And there's three variables that you're looking at there. There's the size of the building and, and the size obviously has an impact on how valuable it is because the bigger it is the more rent uh, the more space that you can let out maybe to one tenant maybe in this case to nine tenants um, the more space you can let out and the more leases you can draw up and the more money that you can uh, charge you can charge for it so the first thing is the size and that's an experience thing as well so uh, many of you are probably here from real estate or if you're not in real estate um, but uh, if you do have experience, you'll probably have got to a stage where you can walk around and look at buildings and say, yeah, I think that's probably in the 30,000 square foot mark because you'll have uh, got some experience of what a floor plate uh, size is and then multiplied by the number multiplied by the number of floors. And it's certainly good to get into the practice of that if you're new to it, uh, getting into the practice of that early on because, that's obviously going to be a big indicator of value. Now, 
a diff one building of the same size may have a different relative value to a building of the same si same size somewhere else. Now, this is a prime city of London address, so we would be expecting. Um, under normal circumstances, the tenant demand is quite strong. Um, we'll also be expecting investor demand to be quite strong as well uh, for, a, for a variety of different reasons. Uh, but the Prime City of London regarded as quite uh, strong in terms of its investment features. Mm -hmm.